So good morning, everybody. Uh, we are Emmanuel and Guillain Bardou, and we come from France. Uh, we started uh, uh, exploring the very high Arctic, the depth of the very high Arctic, 15 years ago. And for that, we created an, an organization, which name is Under the Ball. Uh, mentioned that we are EC50 from the year, and um, we are very honored to be here and to have the opportunity of this talk today. And just before starting, we, we wanted to thank uh, the Explorers Club, sure, Lex organization, uh, Terce Island for welcoming us. And uh, I will just associate with you, Kimberly. We did a great thanks to all the staff, all the teams, the techniques, uh, welcoming guests and so on. Uh, I just associate you, you were great. So today we are going to talk about a part of the ocean we love and try to make it more visible. But just before that, we leave you with a short four-minute film which summarizes our 15 years of expedition with Zendos Bull. On est rentré avec tous nos doigts, tous nos orteils, avec les images qu'on était allé chercher des images extraordinaires qui témoignent d'un monde de glace, un monde en voie de disparition. Au moment où Guilin, Emmanuel et leur équipe traversaient l'épaisse couche de glace pour accéder au monde merveilleux qu'offre l'océan Arctique, la suite d'Under the Pole s'écrivait déjà. Avec une volonté, confronter les capacités humaines au milieu sous-marin afin de mieux raconter et préserver les océans. Et alors, ça fait quoi de quitter ce monde-là et on répond tout de suite, on reviendra. s'enfonce dans les profondeurs, plus on a l'impression d'être sur une autre planète. Notre regard, il a beaucoup évolué depuis 12 ans. Plus que jamais, il faut mettre des moyens et de l'énergie dans l'exploration scientifique. C'est porteur d'espoir, c'est porteur d'avenir. On a besoin de mieux connaître les océans. J'espère qu'on va trouver des gens pour nous accompagner et nous suivre dans ces missions-là sur le long terme. C'est l'échantillon le plus profond qui ait jamais été récolté dans le monde. C'est extraordinaire. Et donc, c'est toute la vision que l'on a du récif et de son fonctionnement qui est remise en cause. C'est aussi euh, la finalité de ce qu'on fait à Under the Hall, la sensibilisation. Et c'est pour ça que tout l'équipage est mis à contribution aujourd'hui. Et tout le monde est super content euh, de partager notre passion, de partager nos connaissances et ce qu'on fait. Deep Life, c'est un programme de 10 ans qui s'inscrit dans la décennie des océans. On va étudier dans le monde entier les écosystèmes profonds à travers la thématique des forêts marines. Et pour ça, on a dessiné le Why Not. Le Why Not, c'est un peu notre voilier océanographique euh, idéal. On l'a dessiné pour être à la pointe de la plongée scientifique. À 
quoi ça sert en fait, ces écosystèmes profonds, ces mondes sous-marins, ces oasis, euh, elles sont restées euh, pendant longtemps dans, dans l'ombre. Et euh, aujourd'hui, on sait qu'on a besoin de, de mieux les connaître, de les découvrir pour leur conservation. Alors notre défi à nous avec Under the Pole, ça va être de rendre visible l'invisible. So as you have just seen in this short video, Under the Pole has been exploring for the last 15 years some of the most remote places of the oceans. Oceans are big and there are a lot to do about their protection. After our first expedition to the geographical North Pole, we decided to focus on what we were good at. We are deep divers, we are polar divers, we are expedition organizers. That's why we put our skills and energy in deep diving all over the world, especially in a zone that scientists call mesophotic, which is between 30 and 200 meters. When we speak about the oceans, most of the people imagine that. A vast blue water surface. When we speak about Arctic Ocean, they often imagine an endless wild desert. When we speak about the depths, they see plains of mud in the darkness. Now let us show you what we have in mind when we think about the depths of the underwater face of the Arctic Ocean. Let us show you parallel world of the mesophotic zone hidden from the surface. And just a point, don't imagine uh, that robots can do the same uh, and can be as efficient as human in any of their tasks. We had uh, great talks about the robots yesterday. They are great tools as humans. Power. Uh, the second point, deep diving requires specific skills, uh, equipment, and for sure, huge experience. And that can be very long to, to get. Third point, conducting science and deep diving in remote places of uh, the Earth uh, is complex for logistic reasons, for organizations reasons, and for sure for funding reasons. Here we are in the high north of Spitsbergen, far north away, it's just uh, the Arctic Ocean and the no North Pole. Uh, last point, a uh, question of um, a team. Uh, conducting science and deep diving requires a very specialized team and highly trained because uh, when you do so, uh, safety is constantly in balance. Uh, last point I wanted to mention here was a technical one. Uh, because pushing the limit of knowledge requires constantly innovation. It can be in the techniques, it can be in the, the approach of the project, it can be in its ambition. And here I, I just want to present uh, an underwater scientific habitat we have been developing, and which name is Capsule. Uh, and we experimented in French Polynesia in 2019. Uh, we have another campaign plan in two years. Uh, and it aimed us to, to live underwater continuously over days and nights uh, to observe and describe life underwater. As I started uh, at the beginning of this part, uh, I like to define exploration as a quest of knowledge trying to answer questions we, we have. Uh, and in that way, exploration is uh, universal and perpetual. But we do also believe that today, exploration for exploration is not enough. The complexity and the cost of expeditions, as well as issues such as global warming and biodiversity collapsing, makes exploration even more powerful and inspiring if combined together with, for example, science uh, for uh, the, the greater good. This is why for many years now we have been partnering with scientists to answer together questions that could not have been answered alone. And by the way, we thank for that, for their long-term support to the Rolex Perpetual Planet Initiative who can make it possible.
Why does the scientific exploration of the mesophotic zone matter? Because it brings us hope. Over the course of our expeditions, it has always been an evidence that their ecology is specific and diverse. And let me show you uh, a few examples based on our, our scientific results. The first point, the coral seascape is more diverse at depth. This means that if we want to preserve the, the biodiversity of the oceans, we have to increase the number of mesophotic protected areas. If not, we will lose some ecosystems. A second result, very inter interesting one, is that the coral diversity is unexpectedly higher at depth in the mesophotic range uh, than in shallow waters, and more precisely, between 40 to 60 meters. And that result goes exactly at the opposite uh, as everyone thinks. Uh, um, another point, uh, during the Depot mission we conducted in, in 2019 with Leticia Edouin from the French um, National Center for Scientific Research, we have been discovering uh, and samples the deepest hard coral, it's this one on the picture, at uh, 172 meters deep, revealing that coral can live much, much deeper than the scientific community thought. Fourth point, the mesophotic corals are nearly not impacted by bleaching in comparison with shallow waters. And combined together with the highest diversity of coral we find at depths, this rises as a potential refuge from global warming. This result showed that the mesophotic uh, zone hides some very rich ecosystems. Their protection calls for a huge need of scientific knowledge. And this is why, and also because science needs time, we have launched a new 10-year expedition, which name is Deep Life, uh, which has been recognized as the program of the United Nations Decade for the Ocean, and which will focus on the mesophotic zone exploration. Its ecosystem gives us hope for the ocean if we protect them now, and to do so, there is an urgency to make the invisible visible. So, we believe that scientific, scientific research without sharing the results is not enough. To spread the knowledge about oceans, you need to infiltrate everywhere, to communicate in different ways, to reach different audiences. In the medias and social medias, we try to show the beauty and the importance of this ecosystem with documentary, book, podcast. We invite artists on board, in residency to share results and ocean knowledge in different ways. We work with NGOs such as IUCN or the Ocean Climate Platform, and we take part in international conference to highlight what's at stake for the mesophotic zone. With them, we contribute to reports or advocacy campaigns. But most of all, we believe education is a priority if we want to change the way we treat our ocean. That's why we visit schools and also get classes out in the field. Finally, we are aware that many people do not have access to the ocean. As we say, out of sight, out of mind. Our solution to bring the sea to the land is a mobile unit to meet all audience whose final objective is to explain the impact of our actions on the ocean while on land. We call it the Another Pole Caravan. Education is one of my favorite things about our job because you can immediately feel the impact you have. So, here we are. We hope that today you discovered a new world and a new world, the mesophotic. It is a complicated world, but a beautiful place we need to protect. Thanks for your attention.